Hello, welcome to our webinar about dates, CBI webinar about dates. We are so excited to have you with us today and it's a pleasure to welcome you to our webinar. We hope to be able to share some very relevant information, updated information about export opportunities to Europe with you today. My name is Tonia Dabwe. I am the founder and CEO of Guide My Growth, a consultancy that works with SME, small and medium and sized companies in developing countries, focusing on how to improve growth and how to improve profitability. And I have been asked to be your host and moderator for today's session. As I said before, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, my main role today is to make sure that everything goes smoothly and that you get the information that is necessary. And I am going to share my screen with you in just a second. I have a slight issue here with my screen. So I'm going to share my screen with you in just a second to launch, to show you our very first um, poll that we would like you to comment on. And I'm having a very slight issue with my screen. So just a, just a second, I'm going to be walking you through our GoToWebinar um, house rules. So I'm just going to kick off with our house rules and try to solve the technical issue in the meantime. We are using GoToWebinar today, and I think some of you may be familiar with GoToWebinar and uh, have participated in it before. So you most likely know that when you are in GoToWebinar, that you cannot hear us, uh, that you can see us and hear us, but that we cannot hear you or see you. So if you have any questions, please share your questions in the questions tab. At the back end here, we are ready and waiting for your questions and uh, we'll be able to answer them during our Q&A session. So you can now see my GoToWebinar uh, slide. So it's working again, that is great. So as I said, we cannot hear you and we cannot see you. So if you have questions, if you have any comments, please share that with us in the questions tab. In case you run into any audio problems or in case you are kicked out of the webinar, uh, in case you run into technical issues like I just did, um, the easiest thing to do is just to leave the webinar and use the same link that you received in your email to log back into the webinar. If you have audio problems, uh, there is a tab at the right hand uh, of your menu, part of your menu at the for the GoToWebinar menu, where you can try switching between um, your computer audio and your uh, headset audio, for example. The easiest thing I have found actually is just to leave the webinar and get back uh, and come back in. In case your audio problems persist, don't worry. Um, you can call into the webinar. In the email, there's also a phone number listed that you can call. It is a local number, so you are not making an international call. So if it doesn't, if you cannot succeed in um, logging into the webinar via your internet connection, you can always still use your phone to come back in and listen to the webinar. And in case that doesn't work either, again, no worries. We are recording the entire webinar. So even if you miss part of it, or if you have to leave early, you are going to receive a link to the recording of this webinar, as well as a link to, we're going to send you the presentations. So you're not going to miss anything. The Q and A's, everything is going to be a part of that recording. We will also be sending you a link to the study, the market study that we did about dates, so that at your leisure, you can reread, you can review and read all the information that we are sharing with you today. As I said before, if you have any questions, please do use the questions tab and feel free to ask your questions at any time. We have two Q&A sessions during this webinar and we will do our best to answer as many questions as possible in the time that is available. We are also going to be running a couple of polls because we'd like to know a little more about you. And um, I am actually going to start by launching the very first poll right now. And we would like to know as I move on to our next poll with my technical issues resolved. There we go. I'm going to launch our very first poll. We would like to know, are you already exporting to Europe? Please answer. Okay. We are seeing comments coming in.
about two thirds of our audience has voted. I'm leaving it open for five more seconds before we close the poll. So if you do want to let us know whether or not you are already exporting to Europe, this is your last chance. Three, two, one. Thank you for voting. And as you can see, these are the results. So it's a fairly even split today as compared to previous webinars where a good number of you is already exporting to Europe and a larger number, slightly larger number is not yet exporting to Europe. Okay, uh, for both of you, I think the information that we're going to be sharing today is very useful because if you are already exporting to Europe, we're going to be telling you about the changing trends on the consumer market, we're going to be telling you about changes in regu regu regulations, European regulations and legislations, and how best to respond to that. Um, we're also going to be telling you which key requirements and changes there might be in terms of what buyers are looking for. And we are very fortunate to have a, we have two buyers actually with us today. Uh, and one of them is also a trade consultant who is going to be sharing information about uh, from a buyer's perspective. Before we move on to the introductions of uh, our panelists, I would like to invite CBI, and I would like to invite the program manager from CBI, Melanie, to join us on the screen and introduce CBI. Melanie? Yes, thank you, Tanya. Um, I hope everyone can see me and hear me. Uh, I would also hereby uh, would like to welcome everybody to this webinar. Uh, my name is Melanie van der Baren. Um, I've been working at CBI since uh, 2008 as a program manager for many different projects uh, across uh, many different countries. And for those of you who do not know CBI, uh, we're the center for the promotion of imports uh, from developing countries. We are uh, a part of both the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Economic Affairs of the Netherlands. And uh, we support SMEs uh, in a selection of developing countries to strengthen their economic, uh, social, and environmental sustainability uh, with the help of creating exports, uh, mainly to the EU, but also to regional markets. <clears throat> and as you may know, um, CBI is celebrating its 50th birthday this year. So uh, this means we already have uh, 50 years of experience, uh, knowledge, and, and network in the EU market. Uh, on a variety of sectors, and um, we're happy to share that with you. So how do we do this? Uh, well, uh, one of CBI's valuable tools is uh, providing up-to-date market information uh, free of charge on uh, our website and, and sharing that through studies and webinars uh, such as today. And um, in some promising sectors, we also have uh, five-year training programs where we support SMEs uh, and BSOs uh, business support organizations uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis with the help of sector consultants uh, where we work towards practical solutions to uh, overcome obstacles in the in the value chain. So for example, to, to give you an idea, um, I'm currently running a CBI project for fresh fruits and vegetables and module dates uh, in Jordan. And uh, in this program, we're working with 33 SMEs but also with the Ministry of Agriculture and sector associations, uh, the ones for food and vegetables, uh, JEPA, and uh, they are aligned, for example, with the JODA, the sector association for dates. And um, in this program, we work with a team of consultants on assisting the companies on organizational improvements, uh, certification, marketing, and, and matchmaking. And we assist the associations in uh, professionalizing their services for the sector. So um, later at the end of the session, I will explain a little more on uh, where you can find more information about CBI and our programs and, uh, and further market information. That's it, thanks. Back to you, Tonya. Thank you for that, Melanie, and thank you for that introduction. And uh, I think now is the time uh, to start introducing our panelists. And I am, before I introduce them, I'm going to tell you that the information that we are sharing today is going to be focused on what the market potential for dates is in Europe. And as I said, we're going to be telling you about the latest consumer and buyer trends and paying particular uh, attention to the various requirements, both the legal requirements as the buyer requirements. 
but we will also be sharing information with you about the main competitors and telling you which through which channels um, it makes sense for you, particularly those of you that are not yet exporting to Europe, through which channels it makes sense for you to start exporting your dates to Europe. I am going to start calling on our panel and I will be introducing them in the same order as in which they will present, be presenting. And I would like to invite Alexander to join us on screen. Alexander Jovanovic is uh, the director of Authentica Global. Hi, Alexander. Thank you for joining us today. And um, Alexander is a market research expert. He's based in Valjevo in Serbia. And Alexander, could I ask you to introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you very much, Tanya. I'm very glad to be part of this uh, webinar today. Uh, I'm uh, I'm working in this sector for something like 20 years, and uh, I'm uh, specialized for the uh, sectors of uh, processed fruit and vegetables, edible nuts, and the spices and herbs. Uh, and in my daily work, uh, I'm uh, trying, I'm doing my best to, to help usually small and medium enterprises from developing countries to reach European markets. So I, each year for CBI, I'm developing something like up to 40 and even more different type of studies. And next to it, uh, I work in many uh, support projects all around the world. Uh, uh, trying to help people uh, from uh, those sectors. One of the sectors is, of course, dates, which is very attractive product uh, on the European markets, which we will we'll learn more about that today. Exactly. Thank you. We look forward to hearing more about uh, the dates market and all the requirements during your presentation. And next up, uh, our next expert is Lydia Garrett. Uh, Lydia is the director of the Lydia Garrett Group, and she is joining us from London in the UK. Lydia, may I invite you to join us on screen? There you are, welcome. Happy to Hi. have you with us today. And Lydia is an international trade consultant who has also worked as a senior buyer of food and non-food products for over 19 years, including for Weight Rose. And for those of you that are not familiar with Weight Rose, it is the top supermarket in the UK when it comes to high quality food, including dates. Um, Lydia, what can you tell us about yourself? Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm based in London in the UK. Um, and as Tonya said, um, I was a buyer for nearly 19 years, um, which that has given me uh, a very deep insight into how the supermarket sector works. Um, and why that might be important for you is what happens in the supermarket sector tends to filter down all the way into the wholesale sector where some of you might start your exporting into Europe. So I can give you a lot of information about that. We look forward to that presentation as well, Lydia. And for our audience, Lydia is going to be focusing uh, purely on the UK market, where Alexander is going to be talking about uh, uh, Europe in general. So that's the 27 European Union countries plus the UK uh, and Switzerland, I believe, uh, in case that is uh, relevant for the dates market. Lydia is going to be focusing on the UK market and our next speaker, who I'm going to invite to join us on screen, Andre, Andre Wieling is going to be focusing uh, on the requirements that we see mainly in continental Europe. Andre Willing is joining us from Germany. Um, Andre, hi, you are the founder and managing director of the Frise Box, and you are the largest importer of dates in Europe, I believe. So we are very interested in hearing what you have to tell us today. And the Frise Box specializes in dried fruits, nuts and seeds, and you import directly from Africa, the Middle East and Asia. What should we know about you, Andre? Well, thank you for, for, for being here. Uh, I'm not the largest importer, I think, of Europe, but uh, what they told me is that I, that I am the largest importer in, in, in Germany for, for, for that. Uh, no, okay. I'm, I'm not, You're on your I'm way. Not that, I'm not that big. Uh, well, uh, it's, it's, it's totally new for me. I'm, uh, I don't say that I'm a bit of nervo nervous, but uh, I don't know actually how, how this will work. So, so let's see. Um, I started my company 10 years ago and I'm working directly with retail. That's the only thing that I can do. Uh, my background is uh, 10 years of purchasing and sourcing uh, in retail at Intermarché in France. And uh, after that uh, 10 years, I started my own company as a Dutch guy based in Germany with a lot of experience from, uh, from all uh, retail countries in, in Europe. Okay, thank you, for, thank you for that introduction, Andre. 
And for our audience, uh, during our prep session, Andre told me that he started his company with just an idea and an ambition and a vision. And today, as you've heard him say, he is the largest importer of dates in Germany. So there is a lot of potential in this market. Thank you, panel, for those introductions. I would now like to move to our market research expert, Alexander, and invite you, Alexander, to take us along in your presentation. Okay, I'm launching my presentation, but I also need to share my screen, I think. Yes, please. But I, I don't see this button. Do you have it or should I pull it up for you? Uh, if you can pull it up, it will be great. Okay, then I am going to change that around. There we go. And I am going off screen while Alexander presents. Oh, okay. I, I, it doesn't matter. I will start now. I, I was thinking that I can move my slides, but I, I didn't uh, see this pop-up button for sharing the screen. It doesn't matter, actually. Ah, okay, okay. it is here. Let's, here it is. Let's, try, let's try it one more time and see if it works now. There ah, we go. Okay. okay, good. Great. So, uh, during my short presentation today, I will talk a little bit about the most recent trends and developments uh, in the dates market in Europe. Uh, about the major market requirements, uh, legal uh, as uh, uh, and also buyer, which can be even more important, and about a couple of uh, most attractive markets for uh, of your choice. Uh, so let's start with the main trends. Uh, I would say a couple of sentences firstly about the general trends, which are uh, uh, important for all type of foods coming into Europe, and also a little bit more about date-specific trends. Uh, the main general trends are considering sustainability, uh, increasing at home cons consumption, of course, because of the COVID-19 influence. And there is a high freight rates uh, uh, problem uh, which many European uh, importers are facing now, but those are mostly connected with the imports of uh, uh, overseas products uh, from Asia. Uh, luckily, most of these are not produced in Asia, so this uh, affects uh, date transport a little bit less. Uh, so sustainability is uh, uh, something that we previously talked about uh, uh, kind of niche requirements uh, in Europe, uh, but over the years, it it, uh, this request for sustainable produced products uh, uh, grew so strongly that now uh, it is it became a uh, actually one of the official European requests and uh, strategies regarding food also. According to the recent uh, study of, of Kantar Global Research uh, Company, uh, uh, currently uh, almost half of all shoppers uh, think that sustainability is more important to them than before. So actually now we uh, have one uh, common uh, customer going into the shop and searching for the different type of labels which guarantee a different type of sustainability, like taking care of the nature or taking care of the people, uh, packaging, etc. Uh, so uh, this resulted in the kind of new type of uh, shoppers, uh, which uh, those research companies named eco-actives. Uh, those eco-actives are very concerned about the environment and uh, uh, they are uh, making their purchasing decisions uh, 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 reading labels on the packaging, uh, trying to reduce the waste uh, mostly, but also we have another type of, also one part of these shoppers are thinking about the uh, uh, more sustainable sustainability aspects like uh, uh, taking care about people, uh, like fair trade and other type of labeling, uh, also wanting to know more about the products they are sourcing, uh, so sort of uh, transparency also are becoming more important. Uh, so this is kind of quite a general trend, not uh, related only to dates. Uh, and what can you see is that uh, in the last year, there was one of the biggest event, uh, when we don't talk, of course, about the impact of COVID-19, uh, and this event is called the launch of European Green Deal. European Green Deal is the set of different uh, legal acts uh, that uh, uh, European Union launched officially. And the aim of this is to uh, 
uh, is to make uh, the European Union the first uh, uh, carbon neutral uh, area in the world until 2050. Uh, for the import of foods, the two most important parts of uh, this European Green Deal, it has different uh, documents, many are several strategies, but the most important related to food in general and dates are farm to fork strategy and biodiversity strategy. Uh, very shortly, what does it mean for suppliers? In the farm to fork strategy, one of the aims uh, is to increase um, uh, organic production. So, for example, internal Europe, European production is planned to increase uh, uh, up to 25% or, or if possible more, uh, meaning that 25% uh, of all uh, agricultural lands needs to be organic certified. Uh, uh, of course, uh, we forecast that it will in influence general consumption of organic products. So, uh, current uh, in uh, import rate or consumption rate, which is increasing for like uh, on average maybe 5% per year, and currently, depending on the product, we have between 3 and 5, 6% of the total consumption. We think that it will increase much more. And uh, uh, another is uh, related to that, that is that actually that until 2030, in the next nine years, uh, European Union will be uh, use 50% uh, less pesticides, uh, which means a big reduction of the application in production countries also. So it's uh, in concerns, uh, it means that many pesticides will be banned and uh, limits uh, set for some current uh, will be low. Uh, of course, uh, also this means uh, carbon emission reduction in the production process, uh, sustainable packaging. So we can see uh, in the future we will see uh, more and more uh, biodegradable uh, compostable packaging, etc., which is currently sometimes a problem in export packaging. Indeed, uh, a lot, we are quite lucky because the common uh, bulk packaging of dates include like 10 kilos of carton boxes and a very thin layer of plastic, uh, but maybe in the future, even those layer of plastic should be removed uh, and, uh, and um, uh, changed actually with some new material. But now it's not the biggest issue. The most focus now is uh, on the retail packed food uh, inside Europe. Uh, in order to, uh, to show sustainability uh, uh, in more uh, specific numbers, we will e expect more uh, New uh, more new types of labeling. Uh, this is one of the main discussions among European buyers. So everybody um, that I interviewed are talking about expecting new labeling uh, and new certification schemes. Uh, so uh, when we talk about those certification schemes, we already have quite a lot. But uh, uh, for example, if you see the slide, uh, the first illustration is not the real uh, labeling. This is just example how it could look like in the future. Currently, we have one type of labeling, which is called a Nutri-Score, and also several types of others, like battery, uh, Nutri-Battery in the UK, uh, uh, and um, uh, also some another uh, approach in Italy. So it is not harmonized, but this Nutri-Score is famous in, in France, in the Netherlands, in Belgium, and it's spreading in the other in Germany also, it's becoming important. But uh, now uh, there is a new idea to launch the, something which is called EcoScore. So uh, producers, when they enter the shop, uh, they will see uh, uh, different types of levels uh, of impact of the production. So they will luckily uh, can uh, decide on that. But still, it is under discussion, and so we can see it more. Uh, uh, reducing carbon emission is the new type of labeling. and. Uh, uh, although it's quite difficult to uh, to measure it, uh, but we already have a couple of new uh, certifications. One is My Climate, uh, Swiss made, and another is a Verified Carbon Standard, and we believe that we will see more of that. Also, we have uh, like uh, packaging certifications like this OK Biobase by TIFF. Uh, there are uh, some uh, very general covering many type of aspects like planet proof. Uh, and uh, all of the established certification like uh, fair trade, uh, focusing quite a lot of uh, ethical uh, uh, aspects uh, and uh, rainforest alliance uh, focusing on uh, environmental aspects, uh, forest protection, uh, our organic logo, of course, uh, which is the most famous. And uh, we have uh, specific certifications focusing specifically on the working conditions like uh, SMETA, uh, audit by SEDEX. Uh, so this is uh, 
short summary about what we have now and what we expect in the future regarding sustainability. And when we talk about the date specific trends, uh, there are a couple of them. One quite important is uh, the sugar replacement. A date uh, is one of the sweetest type of dried fruits and uh, it allow deeper processing. So uh, advanced companies uh, in uh, production, production countries can make added value products uh, from dates like uh, liquid uh, and crystal date sugar, uh, date paste, uh, date syrup, etc. And uh, this really affects uh, uh, and support consumption of, uh, uh, of uh, products uh, which are sugar free. Uh, so it is possible to, to make the product with the date sugar and to label it as sugar free. Uh, it is still uh, sweet enough uh, and it, uh, it supports the clean and clear label trend. So free from everything is now not new trend, but all, all, already on the market in Europe for several years. Uh, the healthy snacking is another trend, very important one. Uh, and the people, instead of snacking chocolate and other sugar, uh, added sugar products, and now people are looking more and more for healthy alternatives and dates are a great alternative because you can snack it uh, at home but also it is uh, uh, it supports production of the new snacking uh, uh, products uh, like those illustrated below so uh, uh, that there is a, a quite big launch of new products called uh, fruit snacks uh, like uh, fruit bars so fruit rolls fruit cubes and uh, date in the, is uh, one of the most frequent uh, ingredients in that uh, next to I would say dried figs but date is even more sweeter than dried figs so it has competitive advantage. Uh, organic uh, demand is also increasing in dates uh, like in other products. Uh, soft dates is something uh, which we see more and more in the retail uh, offer uh, which are uh, soft dates are those containing more uh, moisture inside like up to 35 percent and uh, there is uh, quite uh, a lot of new innovative products uh, and uh, new usage of dates like breakfast cereals sweeteners uh, confectionery products etc uh, uh, luxury packaging is something that uh, that we saw in many of the uh, supermarkets i don't know if you can see my screen but i brought one for example this one is quite small one containing only i think nine uh, nine uh, pieces of medial dates and uh, the retail price is something like three euros while common one is uh, between one and one point half so it is double uh, so also uh, it can provide opportunities for small producers because uh, there is a new trend also of packaging outside europe uh, because of the higher uh, labor cost uh, inside europe so many of dates are packed uh, uh, in some other facilities in Europe uh, for private labels, etc. For example, I don't know if you see another one. This one for, for Lidl is packed actually in Turkey. It's not produced in Turkey, it is packed in Turkey. So there is uh, more possibilities to pack for your products uh, uh, than it was in the uh, previously. Previously, it was very common only to export in 10 kilo packaging and to uh, repack uh, that in Europe. Uh, uh, just uh, about ethical sourcing, uh, I wanted to show a couple of, of, uh, of examples. Uh, I listed several of them in Italy, UK, Germany, Belgium, and all those companies are connecting uh, those um, uh, procurement uh, process with the uh, fair trade certified and other type of certified uh, dates. For example, uh, it's not only fair trade, but we have some own uh, initiatives. For example, German company Rapunzel, they have hand-in-hand -hand certification program and currently they are working with some date producers in Tunisia. So it is kind of fair trade own company approach, not only officially fair trade uh, certification. So uh, this is uh, really becoming more and more important in Europe and uh, it also provides uh, niche opportunities for some smaller uh, producers to enter Europe. Data market. Uh, so it will be very shortly about the main uh, trends, and uh, I will just uh, tell a little bit about market requirements. But uh, our guest speakers also can say more about buyer perspective. About uh, when we talk about legal requirements, uh, one of the most problems that uh, European buyers uh, face 
is the presence of, of, of foreign bodies. And when, when you say foreign bodies, most common is, is to find insects, uh, either dead or alive. And uh, there are usually the type of moss, uh, three type of moss. So, so this is the illustration, actually, how it looks like. Uh, and the most common uh, way to, to prevent it is to use fumigation. Uh, currently, the phosphine or um, carbon dioxide is mostly used, uh, and it is important to know that the methyl bromide and a couple of other type of fumigation is banned in Europe. So it's not possible to, to use methyl bromide uh, on dates and to export this product in Europe because it, it will be removed from the market. Another option is sterilization, but it can be applied only for retail packed dates, uh, which is again ki kind of good chance for new suppliers because it also uh, sterilization inside the uh, packaging also uh, uh, enable uh, to uh, to avoid uh, uh, preservatives and this is the way how you can market your uh, dates as organic with some added value. Uh, I also mentioned pesticide residues, they are quite, uh, uh, requests are quite stricter uh, every year uh, in Europe, many pesticides are changed every year, uh, limits and some are removed. From the markets, uh, one of the biggest issue was the pesticide chlorophyrius, which is uh, which was quietly uh, frequently used in in uh, in dates production uh, to kill. It is insecticide actually to kill insects, but uh, the limits is lowered to 0 0.01 ppm since November last year. Aflatoxin is another issue uh, if you have too much moisture and uh, do not uh, properly store and uh, your dates. Uh, it can be also, it can increase aflatoxin appearance and last, in, we have a couple of uh, withdrawal from the market uh, the products because of aflatoxin presence. Uh, let me talk about production composition. Uh, usually, uh, dates are, do not face a lot of problems with that, uh, uh, but uh, sometimes it can be that uh, preservative limit, com common preservative is potassium sorbite uh, and the maximum limit is 1,000 milligram per kilogram ppm, but it is sometimes uh, more. So you, you really need to, to, to test in laboratory how you use preservative. And, and luckily this preservative is, uh, is not a big uh, issue in Europe because the current research by European uh, Food Safety Agency showed that it is not uh, negatively damaging people health uh, because now the uh, clean and clear label trend is uh, mean, means that uh, uh, consumers are looking with, uh, for, pre uh, for products which do not contain any preservative inside. And uh, yeah, this one is very common in dates. And uh, if you use like glucose syrup, sugars and oils uh, for, for dates, for example, or flour, uh, uh, for example, oil is very often used to make it more shiny. You need to declare, declare it uh, on the product packaging. Uh, and uh, yeah, in food information from consumers, if you really want to export your own brand, which is quite demanding and difficult, but it is possible because we see some of the day products on the European market, you need to follow the food information for consumers uh, labeling, uh, European regulation for that. Uh, about buy requirements, I will just run through it because I think uh, uh, that Andre can say more about uh, how they import dates and uh, the first uh, one uh, is, of course, about quality. There is one, only one, uh, uh, there is no official European Union, uh, either UK standard for dates. Uh, so the buyers use uh, own standards and the industry standards. The most common is a standard by United Nations Economic Commission for Europe. Uh, and the main requirements is, as I mentioned, absence of foreign bodies. Uh, everybody will ask for laboratory test results, uh, microbiology, uh, chemical composition, present of pesticides, uh, moisture content is uh, very important. For cane sugar varieties, it is uh, maxed of 26%. For inverted sugar varieties, it is 30 parts. But it is possible to have more, like 35, if you, you make a dehydrated, a rehydrated dates. It is also important how it is packed. Uh, it can be pitted, unpitted in clusters and stems. Uh, if they are on stems, it is kind of more high end product, uh, more value. Uh, sizing is optional, uh, depending on your agreement with buyer, color and shade of fruit or other aspects. Uh, uh, what is important is to be uh, food safety certified. Uh, the three most common are currently, there are more, more actually types of certification, but the three most common are uh, BRC, 
like a standard norm for the UK market, IFS for Germany, France, other, and FSSC uh, for several other markets. Uh, organic also needs to be certified following organic principles of the EU regulation. And uh, because date, uh, consumption of date is really uh, connected still in Europe with the uh, ethical, uh, uh, with immigrants and actually uh, we see a seasonality. For example, during the Ramadan, there is the highest consumption. Uh, so uh, uh, ethnic certification like halal and kosher is also quite important for Europe uh, uh, because it guarantee uh, uh, that, um, it, uh, that some certain uh, dietary laws uh, can be followed. And also, of course, we can talk about price and delivery terms, but it is topic maybe for our guest speakers. So this is uh, what I would say uh, in this part. So Tonya. Yes, Alexander, thank you very much. Um, and before we move on to a detailed discussion about um, the countries, the largest European markets, we would actually like to ask you, our audience, to tell us which countries you would like to know more about. So Alexander has uh, just shown us a slide and I'm going to move back one slide, this one. Alexander has just shown us a slide showing the largest European markets when it comes to import and to consumption. And I am now going to launch a poll and ask you to tell us which countries do you want us to talk about? Okay, about half of our audience has voted. I'm leaving it open for a few more seconds to allow those that haven't had a chance to vote yet to put in their votes. Okay, I'm closing it down in five, four, three, two, and one. Thank you for voting. And these are the results that we have today. So I see that there's a lot of interest, uh, Alexander, in Germany, the Netherlands, and the UK. And it looks like ah, UK and the Netherlands are very, very uh, interesting to our uh, audience today. Since we have Lydia focusing on the UK market and giving us much more information about that, would it be an idea, Alexander, that you tell us about the German market and the Dutch market, and then do a very short introduction of the UK market so that Lydia can take it from there? Yeah, it is okay for me, of course. Uh, but I think that also the decision by the, uh, by the audience was influenced by the not right order of the uh, countries offered because I am quite surprised that nobody, uh, that quite small number of selected France, which is actually the largest import and consuming market. But in the poll, the first listed uh, market was uh, Germany, followed by the Netherlands. And Netherlands is actually uh, the fifth uh, consumer in Europe in the fourth import. But it doesn't matter. We can start with the uh, Germany was the, the largest, if I remember, and the yes. next one, yeah, okay. The next one, the Netherlands, and uh, the third that was selected in the poll was the United Kingdom. And if you can do and the United Kingdom as uh, the third country, then uh, Lydia can very easily take it from there. And for our audience, if you are now regretting your decision to vote for Germany or the Netherlands, don't worry, all the information about France is in our market study, so you can reread it at your leisure. Okay, so I'm going back to. Can you show? Can you see my screen again? We can. Okay, great. Uh, so let's start first with uh, with, with Germany. Uh, Germany was uh, just a sec. Somehow I don't see the screen. Okay, good. Uh, Germany is a very huge organic market in Europe, uh, and uh, consumption is uh, and import is actually uh, in, is in increasing. It, it showed quite stable pattern of increasing. So uh, over the last six years, we didn't see any year. Uh, with the uh, decreased uh, import and consumption. So in uh, 2020, the import was uh, 30,000 tons, uh, even which is quite uh, large. 
uh, and uh, the leading supplier uh, in Germany uh, in last year was Tunisia with 43% share, followed by Algeria, Pakistan, Iran, uh, United Arab Emirates, but also we have 4% uh, share of dates imported from France. Uh, because France uh, is a kind of trade hub for, de for dates in Europe, uh, because uh, a large number of French, French companies are really specialized uh, in dates. Uh, some of them even have own production and quite long-term cooperation with producers in, in North Africa, and so they are also re-exporting to some uh, other markets. Uh, uh, when we talk about Germany, uh, we must say that uh, it is quite price competitive market. Uh, so average average price for the dates imported to Germany are uh, not specifically higher compared to uh, other European importers. Um, German buyers has <clears throat> very high requirements. Uh, uh, if uh, the uh, if the product imported to Germany is aimed for the German uh, retail market or food industry, uh, usually uh, IFS is preferred type of certification. It doesn't mean that if you are certified with other standards like IFSSC 22000, it doesn't mean that they will not accept uh, your product, but I, I see give you kind of uh, uh, competitive advantage if you are aiming for the German market. Uh, Germany is also quite uh, big market uh, for organic uh, products in Europe uh, and um, it is a uh, large organic market uh, in whole Europe uh, uh, but now we can say that uh, organic was kind of a niche uh, segment uh, in uh, several years ago uh, uh, at least now in Germany it is kind of common product uh, so there are many products in Germany which are which are certified with organic label uh, so if you if you really want to be organic and to be niche in this segment, uh, you can go to some specific uh, certification like Demeter, uh, which is kind of biodynamic, uh, which is above organic certification, uh, uh, meaning that uh, when you produce dates, uh, uh, aside from following the common European Union uh, law of organic production, you need to apply some additional um, uh, procedures uh, when you produce it. Um, also, it is interesting to say that uh, fair trade is also quite big in Germany. Uh, and uh, uh, although uh, the United Kingdom is the largest market for fair trade products in Europe, actually, we have more uh, fair trade companies certified for uh, or fair trade uh, uh, date trade uh, compared to the United Kingdom. So it is also quite a large one. I mentioned also own company initiatives. Uh, like hand in hand by Rapunzel, uh, but also you can see uh, several other uh, initiatives of other companies. Uh, when we talk about organic market, we, I, I must say that actually there are a lot of organic specialized retailers in Germany, uh, and the Germany is characterized by the largest uh, number of those uh, uh, retail chains which are, which are organic certified, which I will tell on this slide. Uh, a specific characteristic of Germany is the large share of private labels. Uh, I think that Andre can tell more, but according to what I found is actually when you uh, when you read the general uh, uh, statistical uh, market share data of the leading uh, retailers, you will always fi find that Edeka is leading. Uh, but uh, when we talk about uh, uh, the real quantities which are traded uh, about dried fruit, it, I, uh, I believe that the situation is the opposite. Actually, the largest quantities of dates imported in, in, in Germany and used as a snack are traded in the uh, hard discounters like Lidl, uh, Aldi Nord and Aldi Sud. Uh, although Ledeca and Reve are more like uh, uh, high-end uh, supermarkets, uh, they sell smaller quantities of dates and generally dried fruit compared to those big. Uh, also, it connects with the previous statement that uh, German consumers are price sensitive. Uh, and uh, uh, so private label are quite strong uh, brands in, in Germany. Uh, and uh, they work uh, by launching the annual uh, uh, public calls for the suppliers. So suppliers are competing. And uh, uh, I must say that it is very difficult actually for European, for producers out of Europe to directly uh, supply uh, German retailers. Uh, so usually it is done by subtop contracting with some of distributors who, are, who applies for those uh, uh, tenders. 
and uh, and uh, make arrangements for packing uh, inside the, of Germany, but also sometimes outside of Germany. As you could see from the example of Lidl, uh, uh, with the packaging I showed you before, it's not always uh, the case actually that uh, uh, the product is packed even in producing country because uh, it must follow specific. Uh, uh, you must actually process specific packing machines, uh, which is. Uh, because each retailer has his own dimension of the packaging, etc. So if you don't have it, you can make even arrangements with the third country together with the German buyer to, to supply the supermarkets. Uh, currently, the, we, there are several independent brands. Uh, the most famous, actually, not only in Germany, but all around Europe is, I think, Zieberger. It is a German dried fruit and nuts uh, retail uh, brand. Um, there is also Farmer Snack, uh, Carla Wilhelm Klassen, Kluth, and a couple of others. And also, we, uh, I mentioned before that uh, there are a lot of German uh, organic special retail chains. We have uh, Biomarkt, DM, uh, Alnatura, which sells only organic products, or most of them are organic. And they also introduced a lot of uh, new innovative products, for example, like uh, you can see on the uh, date syrup by Alnatura, organic one, uh, on, on, the, uh, on, on the slide. Uh, also, what is important to mention that actually quite uh, large numbers, uh, there is no official data because uh, when uh, a market research company do uh, retail research in Germany, they usually do not count uh, ethnic supermarkets and actually the, uh, the Turkish type of supermarkets are very strong in Germany. Uh, there are many of them uh, which are not only shops, but uh, they uh, we have now actually uh, Turkish uh, uh, retail chains across Germany, and they sell uh, a lot of dates too. Uh, not only for the ethnics, uh, ethnic uh, uh, consumers, but also for it, it, they become also important uh, uh, points of sales for all consumers in Germany. Uh, when you talk about food processing, uh, they are consuming more and more dates currently. Uh, um, most of dates in Germany are sold as snacks, uh, but this gap between snacking and the ingredient is decreasing, and more and more uh, 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 dates are used as uh, uh, ingredients in food processing industry. Uh, Alexander, uh, sorry yes? to cut your presentation. You have two more minutes left. Ah, okay. So I will move for another country. Uh, so yeah, I just uh, must say that. Uh, 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 there is, for example, just in, uh, in in food service segment, it is affected by, uh, like in each other country, by COVID-19. Uh, many restaurants were closed and uh, yeah, limited, uh, but catering is increasing. And uh, yeah, I also want to mention that uh, there are some kind of ethnic streets, like in Berlin, with a lot of uh, ethnic restaurants that are also selling dates. Uh, there is the seasonal pattern. I mentioned that the most consumption is uh, around the uh, new year and also during the uh, uh, Ramadan time uh, each year uh, in Germany. So the next one I, uh, I think was the Netherlands. Uh, and actually it was the UK, but uh, there was suggestion to go for the Netherlands. Uh, the Netherlands uh, is uh, the big re-exporter of dates. Uh, the, the import uh, uh, reached uh, 17,000 tons in the last year. And uh, the Netherlands is uh, uh, interesting country uh, because the market structure, uh, import uh, structure is different compared to most of other uh, suppliers because the Israel is leading the way. Uh, Israel is actually uh, uh, account for one quarter of the import of all dates. So it is followed by Tunisia, France, Iran. Uh, you know, uh, uh, when you compete with Israel, it means uh, high quality competition. Israel produces a lot of uh, large uh, medial dates. Uh, but also, uh, Netherlands is the big uh, uh, attractive trade hub because uh, there is significant re-export, like half of the imported dates are exported to other countries in Europe. Uh, sustainability is very important. Actually, uh, the, the Dutch traders are one of the strongest focusing on sustainability. Uh, there, are, there are several ethical trade initiatives. Uh, uh, what is interesting that the Dutch buyers are quite practical, proactive, and searching always for the new origin. So uh, uh, I mentioned the, the leading one, but you can find the uh, uh, dates in Netherlands importing from South Africa, from Jordan, from Peru, for, for Palestine, for Iraq. So for so uh, Netherlands is really attractive for the small producers from all over the world. Uh, 
uh, also similar to Germany, we have price conscious consumers. And on the last slide, I just mentioned a couple of uh, products and brands. Uh, it is very uh, similar to the UK. It is very strong dominance of private labels. We almost don't have very strong uh, uh, retail packer with their own brand. Uh, mo most of dates are sold for private labels, like uh, Albert Heim here. Uh, but also in, uh, or Jumbo, which are local, uh, but also international, like uh, Lidl and Al Aldi. Uh, also, organic are so, sold in the specialized shops like London Barrett, etc. We have, I listed here a couple of uh, specialized importers uh, in, in the Netherlands. Of course, there are many, many more. Uh, and uh, yeah, what other trends are quite uh, similar to, uh, to Germany. So, Tonya, if the, I think we are out of time now, so I'm finishing. Okay, no problem. And uh, maybe, Alexander, you can uh, take one minute after our Q&A to introduce the UK, to just give that quick overview, so that uh, Lydia can continue with the detailed information about okay. the UK market. Okay. okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to take back presenting rights, just one second and uh, allow us a few minutes to answer some of your questions because we've seen a number of questions come in in the questions tab and if you have a question that you haven't asked yet please do feel free to share your question and at this time i would like to invite lydia and andre to join us on the screen as we take just a few questions and we have a longer q a session at the end hi guys we have a longer Q&A session at the end of the webinar where we will address the questions that we haven't gotten around to yet. We have one question here from, from Catherine who says, and I think this is in reference to Alexander's presentation where he says that certain treatments are banned in the EU market. And Catherine is asking, how are organic producers doing treatments against insects? Alexander? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, it is uh, the it's related for uh, for the firstly for the production and after to the processing. So if you want to export the dates as organic, uh, uh, farmers needs to be organically certified, but also processing capacities, packing uh, needs also to be certified. Uh, uh, the common uh, way is actually to use. I mean, I'm I'm an agronomist also uh, and a technologist, uh, but. Uh, I don't live in the country where they produce, but I saw it actually uh, uh, that the most common way is actually to use the plastic bags around the trees, uh, around the flowers. So the insects cannot, uh, uh, this is how you allow pollination, but the insects cannot attack it. Uh, another way is to use um, allowed uh, type of uh, um, uh, plant protection products, which, is, uh, which are certified for the organic production. Uh, many of them are produced in Europe also, but this way is uh, one, one way which I explain is the, the most common. After that, uh, the, uh, you can use, you are allowed to use fumigation, for example, with the carbon dioxide. Uh, this is something which you can use in the, in the uh, but you cannot use other materials. Okay. Um, after, if you want to pack organic dates, uh, uh, there is kind of sterilization. Uh, for example, this one which I showed you, uh, this is type of heat resistant uh, return packaging. So it can go in your processing facility, it can be heat treated again. Uh, so it can increase your uh, shelf life. But uh, uh, anyway, it ends always uh, with a shorter shelf life of those uh, uh, organic dates uh, compared to... Uh, to oh, so that being dates, chemically which, treated, perhaps. Which use yeah. potassium. potassium and, um, yeah. Okay, um, thank you. Thank you, Alexander. Andre, yeah. yes? Yes, maybe I can add something. Um, for conventional dates, what they do is fumigate. Uh, for uh, organic dates, what they do is uh, uh, to freeze them. So yeah, they, freeze them. they freeze them and uh, uh, when temperature goes down, uh, uh, the, 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 the living insects, insects go out. And the next one, what they are doing is vacuumize. So vacuumize to kill the, the eggs and freeze to, to get the, the living insects out. The okay. nets are, are used, as uh, Alexander said, uh, in fact, yes, to, to get out, uh, to keep out the, the insects. And they use it as well for conventional as for, as for organic. Uh, organic. Uh, and then, of course, there's a difference between, well, countries like Saudi Arabia that have normally no, no real issues with, with insects. And, and, and countries like Tunisia or Algeria, 
where they have problems with insects because uh, they uh, grow other fruits and, and vegetables in the oasis. So uh, that's more or less a bit the, the difference. In it. Yeah. And Lilia, in the UK, are there any other types of treatments specifically for organic dates that are different from the ones that Andre and Alexander just mentioned? Uh, no, it'll be it'll be exactly the same as Andre has mentioned. Yeah, okay. the UK food standards are the same as the EU. Yeah, okay. I thought maybe they had some innovative process that uh, was used for organic dates in the UK. Tony, just, just to add one, one sentence, yes. actually it is very common, nothing new, not only for days, that insect traps are used in the more commonly normal in organic production to attract uh, 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 like uh, pheromones uh, in those traps are attracting insects to, to, to get collected, but it is not the only one. There you go, Catherine. Many different options that you can use in your organic date production. Um, we have another question here from Hassan, who's asking which date varieties are the best for exports and which are needed in the market? Andre, let's start with you this time. <laughs> that depends on the country you want to go to. Uh, in, in, in our, well, we can talk about this, this topic for, for hours, I think, but uh, we saw we in the slide hours. now that that's, that's the case. Um, Germany has been uh, very focused on the, the Northern American varieties like Diglett Noor uh, and, and to Israel uh, with, with Meju. Um, but uh, these are the common varieties and these make that prices go go down. There's a lot of competition in it. So what is now coming up is that we're all seeking for, for new varieties and that we can, 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 can start uh, uh, promoting these varieties because dates are totally entrenched as, as Alexander said. So what I'm looking for is all kinds of varieties that people don't know in Germany. Okay, very interesting. Lydia, how is that on the UK market? Um, it, it's very much what the consumer wants to eat um, or cook with. So um, in the UK, like the rest of Europe, um, in the supermarkets, dates are sold either for eating immediately in the fruit and veg departments, or it is sold as an ingredient in the home baking area. So there's um, so that you have to look at price. So for home baking, it tends to be slightly cheaper, and then they tend to use a Delgat Nor dates for home baking and then for immediate eating um, we tend to favor the medjool dates where you can also get a higher price point because it's sitting in the fruit and vegetable section um, but like andre said they're always looking for new varieties so you will see a few different varieties in the fresh eating area but it is very much uh, focused on what the consumer wants that's the most important thing okay do your market research. And Alexander, from your market research, a very short response. Are there any varieties that you see that are really coming up in the market? And after you, we will move to the UK market. Yeah, but I think that uh, uh, Andre Lidia didn't mention, but it is, I think, obvious to, to, to the everyone that uh, currently we have the two varieties which are prevailing in the uh, in the promotion and uh, Medjol and Deglet Noir. Actually, those are the only two varieties which usually retailers put the name of the variety on the. On the but we have a lot of new. Each, as Andre said, each country has its own. What I saw is that, for example, Iran, who is the a leading day producer in the world is not so much present in Europe, but they are coming up. So currently they are the leading uh, supplier of the North Europe. So Scandinavia countries are eating more and more days from Iran. And also Iran is supplying a lot of Eastern European countries like, uh, and also Central Europe, like uh, uh, Poland, Romania, uh, Bulgaria, etc. Uh, and uh, although uh, the image uh, is, uh, they, they have also a large offer of semi-dry dates, soft dates, mm -hmm. uh, many uh, different uh, varieties like Mazafati, Sair, and uh, which do not reach maybe high end segment, but also they have very specific, like Piarom dates from Iran is the famous, like one of the most uh, high end date. Like, uh, it's okay, called chocolate. so in short, many, many different varieties yeah. and many opportunities on the market, both in the UK and in continental Europe. Yes, okay, yes. I think that is a very interesting segue to take a look at the UK market and then follow that by a look at the continental European market. So to kick off, Alexander, may I ask you to give us a very short, maybe just one or two minutes overview of the UK market, generally speaking, and then we will move on to Lydia with her presentation about uh, the UK market. 
Alexander, there you go. Okay. Okay, I will really uh, spend only just I need to, to run the presentation. Okay, only two minutes. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, there was a slide with the uh, with the wrong titles from the previous one, but it is about dates actually. So uh, it's not about paper. Uh, it is uh, the import reached 25,000 tons in last year. Uh, the, uh, what is interesting to know is that Pakistan is again the uh, very specific characteristic of the UK is the different structure compared to Germany, France, and other countries. So Pakistan is the leading supplier followed by Israel and Saudi Arabia, and actually the leading European supplier, Tunisia, is in the fourth place. Uh, and uh, as you can see, even uh, uh, among the first uh, six, we don't see Algeria at all as the second largest supplier. Uh, it is, of course, uh, explained by the large ethnic population from uh, Pakistan, Pakistani population in the United Kingdom, and uh, a lot of presence of uh, ethnic shops. Uh, I think that Lydia will tell uh, more, uh, but I just wanted to add that uh, UK uh, has a variety of dates on the offer, uh, and uh, I must say that there are a lot of ethnic shops and ethnic ethnic importers. I, I mentioned several of them, for example, Foodco, Alpha Trading, Al Haramain Dates. Uh, maybe you didn't hear uh, for all of those importers, but they are quite strong importers of dates in Europe, and they are really uh, focused to supply ethnic shops uh, like Indian, Pakistani, and Asian even shops, uh, Turkish shops in the United, United Kingdom. So I'm, in, in the last slide, I'm mentioning a lot of uh, brands, but I think Lydia is going to, to tell more, uh, just to say uh, that uh, uh, online retail is really increasing uh, in the UK and we have the largest European online retail uh, retail like, like Ocado, but uh, doesn't need to concern a lot of uh, uh, suppliers because usually they will deal with the uh, importers and distributors. So okay. this is very short. Yes, indeed, very short. And again, for our audience, all this information is available in our market study, which was carried out and updated by Alexander. So there is going to be a lot more information in case you felt that this was too short. Um, Lydia, I would like to invite you to come back on screen and tell us about the market in Europe. And after your presentation, we will move to André. Okay. All good. So you can see my screen now. Okay, great. Yes, you're ready to go. So um, as mentioned uh, at the beginning, um, I was a senior buyer uh, in the UK for nearly 19 years and I was with Waitrose for 16 years. Um, I, I now actually work as a trade consultant and I've been doing that for seven years and I, I, I actually do a lot of work uh, with CBI. So I'm working on a number of projects uh, with CBI. I'm just going to quickly take you through um, my presentation, the agenda, so a quick introduction. Um, I'm going to talk quite a lot about consumer insights all the way through the presentation. Uh, a little bit of supermarket analysis and some information for you. Uh, I'm going to talk about the gap, technical, and I will touch on pricing to give you an idea of how buyers work out the pricing and margins, uh, and then a short slide on future trends. But I just want to start off uh, with showing you the value chain um, and showing you uh, on the one side of uh, growing the dates, um, either in bulk or if you have the ability to do the processing yourself and put it into retail packs, and then getting it over into Europe uh, via importers, uh, wholesalers through brands or through co-packers and manufacturers with private label and then going on to the supermarkets or uh, food service is another huge area to look at as well. Um, I want to start off by just giving a bit of insight into how buyers think. Um, and even though this is mainly from a super buyers, uh, supermarket buyer's perspective, actually a lot of buyers think in this way. Um, and the way they view you as a supplier or exporter of dates is that they expect you to be the expert of your product. So you should be going to them and explaining to them in detail what is so fantastic about your product, 
um, you should be able to explain what the market is like, even in the country you're exporting to. So you should understand the UK market in detail and absolutely understand who the consumer is that is going to buy your product. So the buyers expect you to have all of that knowledge. And in this presentation, I'll show you how to acquire that knowledge. And in return for that, uh, for your products and your market knowledge to the buyer, the buyer knows that they'll be giving you a space on their shelf. And in return on that space of shelf, you generate sales and profits. So that is the dynamic between yourselves and the buyer. Now, the buyer wants to know a number of things. They want to know about your company, your products. They want to know about the consumer insights that you have found out to present to them about your products. They want to know what makes you unique. This is the gap. They want to be have a detailed assessment of your commercials and also uh, an understanding of all the technical requirements. So one of the things that you need to think about when you're presenting to um, a buyer in the UK or actually any European market is what makes you different to your competition. And it could be a number of things that I've listed here. So one of the key aspects of selling to um, a buyer, particularly a supermarket buyer, is to determine who is going to buy your product. So you need to work out who is your customer. Uh, so you need to have a deep understanding of who is going to buy them. And on a basic level, we can break customers down into two demographic groups, the ABC1 premium shoppers or the C2DE mass market shoppers. And you need to work out which one you think is going to be your main customer. And then on a higher level, you need to start thinking about the deep uh, values and beliefs that customers hold. So this is the next level above the demographics of whether that how much money they earn, whether they're a family shopper or not. So this is what you need to understand. And the, the, the values and beliefs of the consumer is what they have dearly to themselves about food and how much money they want to spend on that and that is something that is how they operate in life so this is another area that you want to delve into to really understand who is buying your product then you want to move on and work out well which supermarket or wholesaler do I want to target so I've just put a, a, a table on this slide just to give you a quick overview, particularly of the UK. I've also added some uh, supermarkets in Germany and Albert Heijn in the Netherlands. So you want to look at their market share size and you can see at the top of it, Tesco in the UK has the biggest market share of 27%. They're a mass market supermarket, their core customer family. Families, um, their demographic is the mass market of C2DE and they brand themselves on price. And then you can work through all the other supermarkets and determine which ones are right for you and your product. Another way to get a lot of information about your competition and how you're going to look at the different markets and where your product and your company fits in is to actually go onto the supermarket websites and you can pick up a huge amount of information here for yourselves to do your research. So this is a screenshot from Mercado, which is an online supermarket in the UK and they actually sell all the Marks and Spencers M&S products. Um, and just from this one screenshot, you can get a huge amount of information of all the different products, uh, prices, weights. And when you click into them, it will also tell you country of origin. And you can see on here, just when I've done a search for dates, we're getting all the fresh dates and also all the home baking products. Um, another key resource, and, and I've I've put the links on here for you so after the presentation you can go into it. Waitrose, a supermarket that I used to work for, produces a report once a year called the Food and Drink Report um, and that there are links on this slide for you so I would really encourage you to have a look at it. Um, and they have a huge consumer insight department within their head office and they've done it, uh, they do a report once a year looking at the total market and really focusing on who the customer is. And if you just read this report, it only take you 10 minutes, 
that will give you a much deeper insight, particularly of the UK market, but also the consumer trends that Waitrose picks up because they are the most premium supermarket in the UK, will very much uh, disseminate throughout the whole of Europe with all of the European customers. And then the next few slides um, I've got in the presentation is just to give you some idea of what, what it looks like inside the UK supermarket. So this one is Marks and Spencer's. Um, this is in the fresh food area, in the fruit and vegetable area. And these are the products that they're selling and they're very much focused on medial dates and it's all private label. Um, they did huge displays for Ramadan. Ramadan has become very important in the UK and it's not just in the ethnic supermarket sector, it is within the total supermarket sector. Uh, this is wait. Uh, so, oh, sorry, no. This is the home baking section of Marks and Spencers. So you can see that this in the grocery aisles where home baking is situated, you have the dates that are sold to the customers who want to bake with their products, and these tend to be more the Delga Nor dates. Uh, this is Waitrose where I used to work, and this is in the fresh area. And again, you can see medial dates is a big part of the section. Um, but they've also added some other varieties as well. Also, it's very private label dominated. Um, the suppliers that tend to be working on private label for the UK, the biggest ones are Bassana, and Bassana is actually based in Italy. They have an office in the UK and they do private label for both Marks and Spencers and Waitrose and Sainsbury's. Uh, Greenyard Fresh is another big supplier for private label and also Wheelmore. And then the home baking category in Waitrose, you can see it's mainly Delgat Noor, um, particularly in home baking because it's used as an ingredient for uh, cooking. Uh, stones have been removed, they might be chopped uh, to make it easier for the consumer. And the biggest uh, supplier manufacturer in the UK for this area is Whitworth's. Lydia, uh, you, have three, yes. you have three more minutes. Thank you. Um, Tesco is a mass market uh, uh, supermarket in the UK, so they have also a, a slightly more limited range. And this is the home baking section. Um, and I have a, a, just one slide here from Albert Hein, and I've picked these up from their website. Uh, and again, uh, they have Medjul and Delgat Noor. Uh, one of the biggest areas in the UK is the ethnic supermarkets. Um, and you can see the huge range of both private label, but mainly of brand. And, and I've just listed here some more for you to know. So mo the most important thing is to work out what makes you unique. And I've put an example here for uh, Jordanian medjool dates. Uh, and the thing that I would say that makes them unique and how to present themselves to a buyer is that date palms are native to Jordan. The climate and the environment is, uh, grows the best quality, best uh, flavored dates. Um, and they also provide an excellent alternative to Israeli and Californian medjool dates. So that could be your gap. That's what makes you unique to the market and your selling point to the buyer. Um, and like Alexander said, there's a number of uh, technical requirements that I've listed here to sell into the UK market. Smeta is vital. You have to have Smeta certification for the UK. Uh, in terms of pricing, um, this spreadsheet is showing the supermarket margins for the fruit and vegetable area and supermarkets will want at least a 35% margin, if not higher, for dates. In the baking area, it'll be more like 45%. But this spreadsheet will help you work out how to get to those price points when you look at the retail prices on the supermarket websites. And I've put the formula in at the bottom of how the supermarket buyers work that out. And then uh, looking forward um, for future trends, price is going to be incredibly important because of the impact of COVID and the pandemic um, and the ability of what people are earning. Health and well-being is another big area, um, as you would expect, obviously coming out of the pandemic, but that was a big trend before the pandemic. Um, and one of the upsides of the pandemic with everybody being locked down is they've done a lot of cooking from scratch, which means that they have learned actually a lot about the ingredients. So they're looking 
for all these good quality ingredients to cook with from home. Um, and then the last few slides are just an, uh, an appendix, um, and I've put on here, I pulled this off the Sainsbury's website, uh, Sainsbury's is a big supermarket in the UK, and they have on their website uh, questions that you need to answer if you want to um, sell your product to them as a brand, and I thought you'd find this useful. There's a link here so you can go and have a look at that, um, and that's directly from their website, so you can pull that off or you get the presentation after and this is just showing you some marketing slides um, of all the marketing and PR that the supermarkets in the UK do. You can see Rabadam has been big. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lydia. And uh, I know I rushed you through your presentation a little bit. So thank you for giving us uh, that quick overview of all the detailed information that you were able to gather for this webinar. And for our audience, if... Uh, Due to me pushing Lydia, this was a little too fast for you to follow. Don't worry, we are going to send you the presentation at the end of the webinar. And as Lydia says, it includes all the information, it includes the links, and you're going to be able to uh, follow up uh, on that research. And Lydia, I believe your contact information was uh, also included at the beginning, am I right? Uh, I, 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 no, it wasn't. I don't actually, it, it, it wasn't. wasn't. I'm sure. That one after. I'm sure we'll share that information with you as well. Thank you so much, Lydia. We are now moving to continental Europe and we are going to hear from, uh, uh, sorry, from Andre. And Andre, may I invite you to join us on the screen and I will be moving your slides along. And our audience now sees your introduction slide. So um, Andre, just uh, I'm moving to your very first slide. Tell me when you want to go to the next one. Okay. Um, well, it, I'm, I'm actually I'm glad that I'm uh, I'm I'm the last one speaking. Uh, Lydia, you I see that uh, as a consultant you are absolutely working on these kind of things, uh, uh, and, and 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 can explain it much better than I do. I uh, I have the angle of of an importer and and sell it directly to retail. Alexander also told quite a lot of interesting and true things so for the German market at least is that uh, a big big part of it is in in private label and 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 a small part is 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 done in 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 brands national brands like like Seebag or others and this means that if the market is in private label hands uh, uh, retailers uh, ask people like us to go to, to to origin and to find the product. This is uh, this has many uh, explanations, but also, and this is also what Alexander said, the German market, I think, in my experience, is the most complicated market in terms of quality requirements. And secondly, it's the hardest uh, 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 competition in price. And these two things make that the German market is not that easy as uh, as as it is, and that makes it also that uh, 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 retail goes to to people like us because we know what the requirements of retail are. Um, we can go to the next slide because uh, of course there are two parts in in the market. There's a there's a retail part and there's a there's an ethnical part. Uh, Frische Box is, uh, and we go very quickly through through this. But uh, Frische Box belongs to two partners: uh, Jan Tanay, which is a, 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 a person born in, in Turkey and knows extremely well the ethnical market in Europe, and and me, who has been uh, raised and, and born in in retail and uh, and started to 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 my own company ten years ago, and and. I'm more or less a retail specialist, and a retail specialist means I'm always telling this: it's the Champions League of of doing business because uh, 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 meeting uh, 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 product and 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 quality and and price in one, and you always have to be the best uh, uh, because otherwise you're out. It's 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 very very complicated, and you need people that that absolutely know what retail is asking. Um, I started my company in 2013. Um, and this is also one thing that is important. If you want to go to the German or to the Northern European market, uh, you need people like, like us. And, and the Fruit Logistica is a perfect place to be because there are the, the, the importers and the, the sellers, especially in the, in the, in the, in the fresh part. 
and uh, uh, Berlin uh, with Food Logistica or Anuga or CL are places to be where you can find people like us uh, 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 to get in contact in, in, and, and to know how to approach the, the European market. In 2015, uh, we started uh, the partnerships with uh, Impotaco. Impotaco uh, bought Bezana. Lydia told about them. Impotaco is now, I think, the biggest in, in, in Europe in importing uh, uh, dried fruits uh, and, and, and nuts. And, and Tanai, as I said, he took part in, in Frischebox because he saw that, uh, that we were growing and I was uh, in need of financial uh, 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 things and, and we started to cooperate in this in this way. In 2019, we introduced a brand and this is something that I want to mention because we talk about it later. It's about the creativity that we are seeking, that we're looking for. And Red Rhino is, is a typical thing where we meet uh, a, a good purpose. We work with uh, WWF, uh, we work uh, for, for, for helping projects in Africa and, and we sell something let's say, uh, uh, unique on the European markets in, uh, in, 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 in the nut part, which is uh, for us now less uh, important. Well, today we are over 29 people. Uh, we have uh, two offices and we have a lot of cold storage, which we need for especially dates, fixed in, in Africa and, and apricots. And uh, our plan is uh, to open an office in, in Turkey. And Alexander said something interesting. Uh, um, uh, uh, why do Lidl pack in, uh, in, 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 in Turkey? Well, of course, it's one, one of the parts is the machinery. Second part is, is that uh, uh, other countries, because we do the same, other, other countries uh, not really uh, uh, meet the, 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 the requirements of, uh, of, for example, IFS, which means, for example, unannounced audits. Um, Lidl, but also Aldi and Edeka, they expect from us that uh, they can audit us at any time. And what we see is that in countries like Tunisia, Algeria or, or others, or Iran, uh, uh, unannounced audits cannot be done or, or uh, are not, uh, uh, the, the, the factories in origin are not able to, to do it. And, and that's why uh, uh, we move to, to places like Turkey to, to pack our, uh, our products. Uh, we go to the next one, Tonia. Yes, and you have about 10 minutes left. Yes, I go quick. Uh, <laughs> next slide. Well, what we want to do is to be the best in price uh, ratio, but this is uh, easy. Everybody wants to do this. What we're looking for is... Uh, is, 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 is uh, 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 a new concept, new, 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 uh, new products, uh, uh, in dates, new varieties, and what we do as Fisherbox, we wo we work with a strong network of international partners, and we all help each other in this. It's like a, a spider web uh, where we uh, help each other in sourcing, purchasing, importing, and and these partners we are very, very loyal to. Next one. Well, of course, we have been talking about it. It was also in the in the presentation of Alexander. Uh, um, we are IFS uh, uh, certified. Uh, we are Demeter organic, and this all and that's very very important for 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 all the people listening. This is the key to talk to people in retail. If you don't have this, you cannot talk to them. So yes, uh, uh, quick, that, that this was also the first thing I invested in, in having IFS, because otherwise I was not able to talk to, 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 to my customers that I have now. Uh, we don't want to be the biggest, but we want to be the best, which is uh, 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 important for us. And in this case, sustainability, I think we didn't talk that much about it in the, in the previous uh, um, in the previous uh, presentations, but sustainability is getting more and more important. Uh, FSC paper uh, and all these kind of things are, are asked more and more, but also they're asking that we are uh, uh, working in sustainability for the environment. And, and this is important uh, uh, for us, and we want to show this to, to our customers. And the second thing is that in which we absolutely believe is honesty. Uh, um, with all the people that we work with, especially in, in origin, um, we we work uh, 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 
we work with an, an open book, we talk about it later. Uh, we need to tell what we can do and what we cannot do, uh, and we expect it from our from our partners. And in this case, it's also extremely important uh, to have punctual deliveries. Otherwise, we uh, we argue with customers, and customers in in, in retail are that big is that uh, we cannot afford or allow ourselves to 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 lose this. Next one. Well, these are some references that we do. Um, I think that Alexander was right, is that the biggest volumes are done by, by hard discount like Lidl and Aldi. Uh, I am doing uh, uh, Aldi, and that's why I think I, I have become one of, uh, of the biggest ones. And especially, and this is uh, maybe important for, 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 for you to know, um, especially in, 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 in Germany, the biggest volumes are done in, um, in the fruit and vegetable department. Um, um, we find uh, dried fruits uh, and dates, for example, of especially in, in many in many categories in the in the supermarket, but the biggest volumes uh, are are done in the in the fresh department. We go to the next one. Uh, I think this is the the most important and interesting slide for 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 you all. Um, well, of course, we all know, and we have been talking about it, about the, the quality standards that have been asked by, uh, uh, that are asked by by, by retail. Uh, uh, it's it's quite interesting, but ethnical market is not a, have uh, is not having these kind of demands at all. So there's a there's a huge gap between what ethnical market wants and what a uh, uh, retail market is 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 asking. Um, in, 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 in this case, uh, uh, as I told you, 90% uh, or we are doing 90% of our volumes in private label is that retail comes to us and says, we are looking for this or the other way around. We go to retail and say, uh, uh, we have this idea or we can propose these kind of products. Are you interested in? Um, the German market is, uh, is, as I said before, about... Uh, uh, I think the biggest part is Diglett Nu from, from uh, Tunisia or Algeria. Um, in the slide of uh, Alexander, if I remember well, Pakistan was mentioned. Pakistan is a sealed date. This is especially used in, uh, used in, in industry. Uh, you don't find them in, in, in retail packs in, in the German market. Um, and um, People is uh, or people are uh, 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 asking uh, uh, for us, or it's it's more or less a, let's say a, a push market. Uh, we 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 use push marketing. Um, the the German uh, people are not looking for for specific dates. It's that retail is proposing special dates to 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 re, uh, to, to the to the final consumer. It's. Uh, it's it's a marketing where we show what is possible in the date uh, market. So we are using Mazafati dates. We do Kaluta from Iran. Uh, we start now with Asil dates from Pakistan, but in retail packs. Uh, we do a lot of Diglett Noor. Um, these kind of, of varieties are uh, uh, um, exist, but as far as I understood, especially from Saudi Arabia, there are many, many varieties. In Egypt, there are different varieties, and and these all these kind of varieties, as long as they uh, 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 meet the, the the quality requirements of uh, 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 of, of Germany, uh, we have uh, all chances to 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 sell them on, on on this market, and this market is is growing uh, uh, very strongly. Um, for us, as, a, as an importer, uh, we expect, of course, that uh, uh, there's a special level of, of quality that you're, you're able to propose. And then I'm especially talking about uh, HACCP or, or good manufacturing practices. If you have uh, things like uh, uh, IFS or BRC or organic, it's, it's even better. Uh, Lydia told you uh, uh, already, and this is uh, absolutely true, I am looking or we are looking for product specialists. We, we, expect that you absolutely know what you're talking about. Um, you need to have enough of uh, production capacity because the German market is 80 million uh, uh, final potential final consumers, but uh, uh, only five or six maybe retailers. So if they start to, to buy, they, they buy uh, huge quantities. Um, 
what uh, I want from uh, what I expect from my partners is that they clearly say what they can do and what they cannot do. Uh, um, in my experience, I hear a lot that, of course, they, they people say they are able, but uh, in fact, they aren't able. Uh, I want why uh, I'm looking for creativity. I, I need open book working. That means for me that uh, we are uh, uh, working together. We are, I am the extended arm for, for, for you people in, in origin to sell uh, your product. Uh, I'm always telling, I'm always taking the slogan uh, um, uh, of Nokia, uh, connecting people. That is, that is more or less my, my work. And, um, and what we are looking for is, uh, is exclusivity. One more um, minute, André. Yeah. What we do, uh, and, and this is something that not many people in Germany do, is that we help you in quality matters. Um, I am always auditing uh, factories in origin. I'm, I'm uh, taking my quality managers with me and that help you in, in quality things to push you up to a higher level in what you're doing. And, 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 and this helps uh, uh, for you to get access on, 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 on our market, but also other markets. Um, we can talk about many things uh, of uh, 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 on the German market. I think that uh, uh, um, you uh, you all already explained a lot about it. Um, if you have any questions, you can always contact me, uh, which is absolutely uh, no problem. What I want is to help you uh, and and to push the market of dates forward. Thank, Thank you, you very much for your for your presentation, André. And we have a lot of questions coming in. So I'm going to ask you to stay on the screen and I'm going to ask Alexander and Lydia to join us again as we kick off the second round of Q&A. And for our audience, uh, officially we have reached the end of the reserve time for our webinar. Given the number of questions that is coming in, we're going to extend the webinar by a maximum of 15 minutes. Uh, if you cannot make it again, don't worry. We are recording everything and we are going to send you a link to the recording so you can review it at your own leisure. Um, okay, let's uh, let's kick off with uh, the first question that we're seeing here. And this is a question that was asked by Paul. And Paul says, what are we seeing on the market? Is the trend towards deep pitted products or pitted? And is this perhaps geographically divided? Who would like to start with that? Andre. Um, German market is a is a market for pitted uh, Diglett Noor dates. Um, this is uh, uh, done because if you uh, take normal uh, uh, dates with pit, uh, there's this problem of, of insects, and um, the, the the German market is not used to this. The French market, it's absolutely no problem of 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 selling pitted or, or of selling dates with pit. But the German market is, is pitted. Um, but we have to uh, distinct two varieties. Medjool dates, for example, is always with pit. Uh, dates from Saudi Arabia have also no problems with uh, infestation. So they also sell always with pit. Uh, it's, it's a matter of risk uh, 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 that, that retail wants to take yes or no. And if you can show that the, your dates have no problem in, with infestation, uh, they accept uh, dates with pit. But, uh, okay, so Germany, Andre, just pitted. to confirm, André, uh, Germany is with or without pit? Uh, Diglett Noor is always pitted, so without pit. Okay, thank you. France, for example, most of it, or, or let's say 90%, I think it is with pit for Diglett Noor. Clear. Lydia, how's that in the UK? Um, it, it very much depends on the consumer again. So if it is in the mainstream supermarkets, um, then the dates tend to be sold pitted, so without the stone. And that's because the British consumer can't quite handle the stones. Um, but if it's more for the ethnic supermarkets, where a huge amount of volume goes through the ethnic supermarkets, then uh, the dates are sold with a stone in them. Uh, because that consumer has a better understanding of the flavour profile and what makes a better quality date. So it, it does tend to come down to uh, who the consumer is and where they're shopping. Okay. And that's a very nice bridge to our next question. Uh, Asad is asking, 
what do we see in terms of usage trends in the EU? Are dates preferred as a snack or as a baking and cooking ingredient? Okay, Lydia, we're starting with you because Andre is uh, <laughs> slightly <So. laughs> disturbed by this question, I believe. Um, so, you know, again, this comes back to consumer insights and, and really understanding the different markets. And, and the market is split between eating date um, as a snack, as a fresh food, um, and using it as an ingredient. So, in the, in the UK, um, eating it as a, as a fresh food, as a snack, um, is, it, it is slightly bigger than baking. Um, and within the sort of the snacking area, you have within that the supermarket sector, and that's like the whole British consumer that will be buying it for a number of different uses, maybe to give to their children or to use as a health food snack. And then obviously you have the huge ethnic market um, where the dates uh, are, are used a lot more in the home. And then you have the baking market, um, and, and dates are an ingredient that have been used in Northern Europe for hundreds of years uh, to sweeten foods and, and cakes and things like that. So uh, the baking area is huge um, and the baking consumer is very sp specific in what they want. So I wouldn't assume that the baking side, the quality should be less because okay. people who love to cook know that they need to buy a good quality ingredient uh, to be able to bake uh, the good uh, cakes or breads or whatever it is. Okay. In, in Germany, maybe I can add, in Germany we don't find any, any dates in the baking area. Uh, I think it's all snacking or uh, used it as, uh, as Alexander was telling, in bars. Uh, it's a huge, huge market uh, that uh, 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 healthy snacking uh, in, in bars, uh, they use um, the dates as, as the, the main in, uh, ingredient and add nuts and, and things like this. Um, okay. and, and then of course we find them uh, 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 in, uh, in, in, in mueslis uh, uh, breakfast uh, cereals. Yeah, absolutely. So we have the UK market and the German market and Alexander, uh, maybe in terms of the European wide market, what do you see in terms of trends with particular regard to snacking versus baking, which is the biggest? Yeah, actually snacking is, uh, is, is absolutely clear. Uh, if it is a question for me, uh, uh, snacking is the, the absolutely dominant and all the new products that we uh, that I showed are emerging. So, uh, uh, but from the um, uh, from the point of view of the supplier, it is also important to know that <clears throat> uh, if they are used as ingredient in fruit bars, uh, uh, it is not always uh, the raw material is not always imported to date, but uh, it is already processed date paste very often. And some of the companies like Bodbel in Tunisia, for example, they already developed quite big processing uh, offer, and they are able to offer the sugar powder and the date paste too. Okay. Uh, so yeah, this is what, what we see. This is just to, to uh, uh, maybe to, to make audience uh, think about possibilities, although it's not always cheap, uh, to invest into uh, additional processing facilities because for European processors, it is easier to use date paste than uh, to process dates by yourself. Okay, thank you. And I remember you saying that dates are used as a sugar replacement and also used to replace uh, chocolate, for example. But uh, I do also remember from your market study that you said that there's a lot of interest in new products like chocolate covered dates, which put my mind at ease. So it's good to hear that. Yeah. Um, in terms of supplies, we have a question from, um, I think it's from Amir Hussein, who's asking about climate change. He says, are we seeing supplies being affected in any way by climate change? And Lydia, this is a question directed at you, it's about the UK market. Are we seeing supplies being affected by climate change, uh, especially, when it, uh, especially in terms of large scale producers in Northern Africa? Is it something that is garnering, garnering attention in the UK? Uh, yes, it is. Um, and, it, and it's not just for dates, actually, it's for all fresh fruit and vegetable growers. Um, the UK suppliers uh, that I know who work for the supermarkets providing private label, they have actually been working on uh, finding new suppliers, new growers in different countries 
um, for the last few years because they are sort of right at the forefront of seeing what, what climate change is doing. Um, so a lot of the time I'm speaking to them, they want to know about new countries um, so that they have almost a backup to their existing supply chain. But they all know that they need to have backups. Um, and, and I know we didn't go into a lot of detail about sustainability in our presentations, but that has become a massive, massive area um, for supermarkets and suppliers um, to grow environmentally and climate change. It is absolutely the biggest factor affecting that. Okay, very interesting. Um, I'd like to take a question from Bahram, who is asking about, and this question I think is for you particularly, Andre. Uh, he'd like to know what your experiences are with importing dates from Iran, and you touched on that a little in your presentation. But he is particularly interested in your experiences giving, given international business embargoes and money transfer issues. And he'd also like to know, what is your evaluation of the Iranian date? Um, first of all, uh, uh, of course, we all know Iran is extremely difficult to do business with in, in our uh, situation, uh, uh, but there are possibilities. Um, the Iranian date, as Alexander said, has been uh, sold a lot on the, or uh, started extremely in, in, in Scandinavia. I think it's also because it's more or less a fresh date. And uh, I think the temperature in Scandinavia is, is uh, high uh, or lower than in, 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 in the south of Europe. So uh, uh, less problems in Scandinavia with these kind of dates than, uh, than in the south of, of, of Europe, where they're, they're also closer to Tunisia. But um, Mazafati, Kalute, these are, are uh, uh, um, varieties that are coming up uh, extremely in, in, in northern Europe. Um, and and they they are getting more and more market share here, so it's it's okay. it's, it's 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 very interesting. But it's uh, a country that have no uh, uh, the the, uh, the the quality uh, standards are uh, uh, are are still not uh, really reaching the demands of, uh, of 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 Europe. So we're helping them in in. Pushing up their their quality uh, stamp. Okay, so um, I, I think. I can, oh, sorry, Wait, I was yeah. just going to quickly add um, that there are Iranian dates sold in the UK um, because in the UK we have quite a big Persian community um, uh, and a lot of uh, super ethnic supermarkets are, are run by Persians and also Lebanese. Um, and there, there are quite a few Iranian brands that are sold. Um, I don't know the detail like Andre does of actually bringing it in, but that there are a number of Iranian brands sold in the UK. Okay, so Bahram, uh, get in touch with Andre and get in touch with Lydia. It seems uh, there's a lot of market potential here. Yeah, the problem, um, is, going, um, the, the problem is really the, the fresh date. So it has a, a best before date, which is quite short, and the supply chain must be perfect. Like, for example, they come in for me frozen. So uh, uh, I send them in, uh, or I let them come in frozen, and and uh, how do you call it? Uh, um, thaw. Thaw. <laughs> thaw them yes. uh, when they arrive at your yes. at your, exactly. at their destination. Okay. Uh, given the time, I'm going to look at a couple more questions, and I'm going to ask our panel to give a very short answer to those questions. Um, what do we say in terms of organic versus non-organic consumer demand in the UK and in the EU? Lydia. Uh, uh, non-organic will always sell more than organic because there's, there's a, a price increase for organic. Um, but all, it, again, it depends on the customer. So if you are targeting a very premium, high quality, uh, let's say medial date, then you are, and you haven't got huge volumes, you know, you might be targeting one of the top end retailers and being okay. organic will give you the edge. So it, it, it depends it who depends you want to target. Consumer. Yeah, okay. Andre, what do we say in Germany? Um, I always divide the market of dates in three, and that is one is medial date, the other is uh, uh, Diglett Noor, and the other ones are the other varieties. For me, we have to separate these three uh, um, uh, uh, varieties of, of dates or groups of dates. Um, 
In Medjool, we find some organic uh, and it is growing, uh, but it is especially pushed by the, by the Israeli uh, uh, people. Uh, and then uh, in, uh, uh, in, in Diglett Noor, uh, we see that the market is growing huge in, uh, in, in organic. It's, uh, it's getting a, a bigger and bigger market share. Okay, Alexander, EU-wide? Yeah, there is no exact data about the share of, of, of the organic dates in, in whole Europe. I said that the, definitely Germany is, uh, is the largest consumer of organic dates. Uh, it may be that some up to 5% is organic and the most uh, important issue is actually how to prevent the fruit of uh, being infected with insects. I, I, I don't know if you can see it, maybe I, I need really to, to, to close to the camera. For example, this is one kind of big medial date. So it can reach high price because of the size, but as you see, there is insects inside. So it is, even in conventional, if it produces, it's difficult to, uh, to, to make it, but there is possibility because there are product producers. That, some of them are, many of them actually are in Tunisia, uh, specialized uh, to, in organic uh, production methods. So, so I mentioned like using the plastic bags to cover the, uh, the branches to, uh, to Mm -hmm. Fruit heads, uh, so, so it is one there. and many other. Yeah, yeah. yeah Maybe I can... quality is everything I'm hearing is quality, 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 and mm. uh, make sure you know what your consumer uh, wants. Uh, I'm sorry, Andre. Just a very short uh, follow up because we are running out of time. Andre, go ahead. Very yes, we had something for the German market. Uh, uh, Demeter is uh, is is asked even more than than organic. Uh, uh, retail wants to differentiate and say and say, okay, we we go even uh, further than organic. We uh, want to have uh, by uh, uh, biodynamic, and that's uh, that's. Um, if you want to to come now on the German market and and you have Demeter, you have hundred percent chance to sell your goods. Okay, and on that note, I think we will be ending this panel. We have a number of questions still about uh, pricing, about types of dates, and about uh, uh, the size of com consumer demand, the size of imports, metric tons, for example. And for our audience, a lot of that information is in our market study. So I'm sorry that we didn't get to your question today, but the questions that we didn't get to, we have tried to answer most of them in a market study. So please do make sure to review that. I would like to thank our panel and Lydia uh, particularly for joining us from the UK, Andre for joining us from Germany and giving us practical insights into what uh, buyers are looking for, importers like yourself are looking for, Lydia uh, sharing particularly useful information about supermarkets in the UK and how best uh, we exporters, our audience listening might be able to gain a foothold and start exporting to them. And Alexander, of course, for providing the background, the overview and the context of the European market and where opportunities are. Thank you so much for joining us. I would now like to invite Melanie back on the screen to share some final information about CBI before we close this webinar. Melanie? Yes, um, can you allow me to share my screen? I can, and I am making you a presenter right now. Uh, yes, all right. We cannot yet see you, Melanie. There. No, um, not this one. This one. Yeah. Can you see it now? We can see your screen, but we cannot see yeah. you. Okay, this is fine. Um, well, uh, thank you, Tanya, and also uh, thank you to, for the speakers for this really interesting session. So uh, before we close, I quickly would like to draw your attention to the uh, CBI website. Um, so um, if you go to uh, cbi.eu, you can find more information on coming projects. Um, for example, if you go to the tab here, projects, you can see um, which countries and sectors uh, are open for application. And if there is no program uh, in your country or sector, uh, there's still a lot you can do. For example, to go to the market information tab. And uh, here you can find um, a lot of studies, market updates. Um, for example, the information on dates that we shared with you today uh, if you go to, um, let's see, uh, yeah, you can scroll down and you can choose your sector. In this case, you go to uh, processed fruit and edible nuts. And if you scroll down, you can see all kinds of information, market studies, uh, tips on how to find buyers, 
specific product studies. So for dates, you um, you can go here. And um, of course, you can uh, subscribe to our newsletter to uh, to stay informed and uh, follow us on uh, on social media. Uh, so we're happy to uh, to stay in touch with you. That's Thank it. you for that. Thank you for that, Melanie. And I am pulling up the final slides to close down this webinar. So as Melanie said, uh, all information can be found on the CBI website. And I'd like to thank you for your patience. Uh, and again, if we didn't get to your question today, please do have a look at the market studies that are available on the CBI website. Reminder, we, are, we have recorded the entire webinar, so we are going to send you a link to the recording. You are also going to receive the slides of the presentations with all the detailed information that was shared by Alexander, Andre, and by Lydia. And uh, we are also going to, sh to share with you a link to the market study itself, so you're going to get all the information that you need. Before we close the webinar, I would like to draw your attention to upcoming webinars that might be of interest to you or to people that you know. Uh, CBI is organizing a number of webinars in the upcoming weeks, so do make sure to visit the CBI website, cbi.eu slash events, if any of these webinars is of, is of interest to you, and do please then register for them. Finally, uh, as we close this webinar, we are going to show you a very short survey, and we would very much appreciate it if you could take just 30 seconds to answer the survey. If you think this webinar was fantastic, give us a 10. If you think it was horrible, give us, a, uh, give us a one. And if we end up somewhere in between, that would be very much appreciated. If you have any tips for us how to improve our webinars, we'd like to hear that from you as well. Um, again, I'd like to thank you very much for being a part of this webinar today. And it was a pleasure to be your host and moderator. Thank you again for your patience. And we look forward to seeing you at future webinars. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.